H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So, good evening guys. Good evening everybody. Is everyone able to listen me? Okay. Fine. So, yesterday we had seen like what is pig, where is pig, uh, pig being used and what is the pig engine is about, how it, it interacts with our cluster. Uh, which is our actual Hadoop cluster and what is the language that we are going to write the scripts for PIG which is called as PIG Latin and also few use cases in healthcare industry and so on right so today we will try to cover a few of the PIG transformations as you all know with yesterday's class one second guys okay as you all know with yesterday's class the first command would be the load command and then set of transformations and at the last dumper store command so this is our actual flow for writing a pic script right so today we will try to concentrate on the set of transformations whatever that we have and probably by tomorrow or uh, if at all, if time permits, we will see a few built-in functions also so that we can cover much part of PIG here. So, uh, is everybody with clear with the load and dump commands so that I can directly jump into set of the transformations, whatever we want to discuss today? Sure. So, first of all, we will see a few of the basic primitive data types. So, it is as common as any other programming language. So, hopefully, I think we all know about int, long, float, double, about this four at least. So, whoever any whoever is in touch with any of the programming language they should be able to understand what is int long float and doubles right so int is nothing but a signed 32 bit integer so it can accept a length for till up to 32 bit and long is nothing but is an extra permissions that was given to int in the sense it is a signed 64 bit integer so whatever the properties that were available for int will be applicable for long as well but still it's a 64 capability engine that's it and the same with double and float so these two primitives are used for representing a floating point item in the sense a, de a decimal values so float is nothing but a 32 bit floating point and double is a 64 bit floating point so we all are aware of these four basic primitive data types and the next one is which is newly introduced for pig is char array and byte array so just to represent the arrays here we are declaring them as char arrays and byte array instead of actual arrays whatever in general in our regular programming languages we use it to declare as array itself right array of a or something like that array a or something like that we use it to declare in general but here we can, we have to declare it as char array or byte array and also I want to let you know some of the basic data items as well these are just the representations but they are not the physical uh, 
in the sense while writing any of the program we won't declare them physically but the representation would be given like this atom triple and back so any value will be called as atom here maybe x y z or maybe a b c whatever one two three so all those call are called as atom and tuple is nothing but a collection of atoms so i can call a single tuple as x y x a b c 1 2 3 so all this collectively all the atoms collectively called as tuple here and bag is now a next level of tuple which is collection of tuples again collection of tuples the representation of a bag will be in this form so i said a b c 1 2 3 50. something like this okay so here this is one of the tuple and the second one is another tuple so these two tuples together are called as bag so these are the few basic data items as well and as i told you these are used for representation purpose only i mean while explaining the things or whenever we are discussing about any of the items on pick we used to generally call them as atom tuple and bag in real world and let me explain you few execution types as well okay in general a pick scripts can be executed in two ways one is local mode and another one is map reduce mode so local mode generally we will use this local mode whenever we install our hadoop cluster in local environment rather than a pseudo distributed mode or distributed mode so in most of the cases people will not prefer local mode because it's just only uh, confined to a single mission and only for a development phase even in development phase also most of the people i don't say most everyone will use map reduce mode only but not a local mode okay but here if i want to enter into pig i would start it with a command called as pig x of local so whenever i execute this command i will be entering into a or less grunt okay so grunt is a default shell where we will execute our pig scripts it might be on a local mode or maybe it might be on a map reduce mode but if you want to write any of the pig command you have to enter into this shell so only this shell can understand all your pigs for example pig scripts for example if you directly enter into your cluster and try to write any of the pig command it will be not able to understand our cluster directly will not be able to understand so unless and until you you enter into grunt mode the cluster will be able to understand all your pig commands okay and the second one is map reduce mode this is the default mode so whenever you install pick and try to execute any of the pick command directly it will enter into map reduce mode and it is preferable in 
sudo distributed mode distributed mode okay here I can directly give the command as pig with a semicolon okay if I just give pig it will directly enter into MapReduce mode and if I give pig followed with a local then it will enter into local mode or else if I want to differentiate by showing in the command I can give it as pig x map reduce also but the preferable one is pig because it's the easiest way to enter into pig grunge that's it okay now once I give this command I will enter into shell. Okay, so I will show you all uh, how you enter into shell, and we will see few of the commands as well executing those commands also. And <coughs> all these two modes can be executed in another two inter uh, execution modes also. Okay, so one is interactive mode and the second one is script mode and the third one is embedded so when I enter into local mode I can execute pick commands in three varieties and when I enter into MapReduce mode I can execute pick commands in again three modes so it's like totally six combinations we have in pick for executions so interactive mode is nothing but as the name suggests it's a step by step mode as I told you <coughs> it's not like Java I write whole the code into one area maybe some default editor or whatever the editor I take and I create a jar file and I have to execute all the steps at a single point of time it's not like that I can even see the results in my pick script step by step and whenever I feel that I have written some wrong statement I can correct there and then itself and I can proceed further so it has that capability and the next one is script mode it is like much more like a writing a program and executing it a single shot so clubbing all the file and executing it in a single shot So I will write all the pick statements at one place and I will store it in a sample file maybe some file name let the file name be ABC and the general representation <coughs> of storing a pick file is name followed by dot pick so that is a general format which people use it to follow so I will execute this as pick abc dot pick so this is one way of writing pick scripts but the best way if you ask me is interactive mode because here the advantage is whenever you feel that you are doing something else or if you want to see the, your results immediately for after you write your step the only mode that we can have is interactive mode so that is the reason generally people use it to tend towards interactive mode and in most of the cases and in most of the companies people will write big scripts in interactive mode only and and the last one is embedded mode here all your pick functionality will be 
embedded in maybe java or python or any other language so whatever the functionality that you want to write in pic you can even write or represent it in java as well and run it so but this is of no use because again you are writing all your programs in java itself right so instead of doing this you can probably go to mapreduce itself and write your executions but even they have given one more way to represent your programs in other languages also maybe java python c c++ so it's a, again like a language independent so these are the few execution modes but we would be following which is the default one and which will be used by everyone okay so let me go into this see i had just given you examples of representing your tuple bag and few other values also i will explain you about map so don't worry so every record is a tuple so for example if you try to compare it with sql uh every column of each row will be called as a tuple right so i have a table employee table where i have employee id emp name and order id something like that okay and employee id is tab name rahul order id is 23 again employee id b nisha 27 or something like that okay each is a tuple here a is a tuple rahul is a tuple 23 is a tuple but if you come to bag a bag is an unordered collection of tuples so one thing you have to remember is a bag might not be represent it represented the same way we represent it in sql maybe it can be starting with b comma nisha comma 27 and a comma rahul comma 23 or maybe it can be start with a comma rahul comma 23 or b comma nisha comma 27 so whenever you retrieve some information uh, from a pic script and your output is in the form of bags it there is no mandatory thing like i have to get it in a some ordered way it can be in any or unordered format as well so it's like a relation in a special kind of bag which can be an inner bags or outer bags as well so in general bag will not be a final output of any program so it's just an output of uh, it might be an output of your transformation but output will be in the form of let me write it here yes final output okay yeah field or maybe key comma back so we will see how the outputs will be in general so it might be a key followed by number of bags or maybe a single bag so the output will generally be in this format only but all the bags whatever we are seeing or whatever we are representing here will be output of your transformations only okay and generally a bag will be represented with curly braces so each bag will be represented 
internally within curly braces. Okay, and the last one is a map. A map is a set of key value pairs and it's like a rarely used point where we will try to touch map. So it can be in the form of it will be in the form of key value pairs. So key will be nothing but a unique care array and we will be like tuples or bags or might be anything as well also. So that's what the another kind of representation. But map we will not be using in general. The most of the times we will be touching with bags only. Okay. So this is somewhat the background of pick. So let me enter into the cluster first. So let us start with transformations. So I will show you or I will show the execution of few of the transformations, at least the main transformations and you can try yourself for at least simple transformations, okay, such that you will be uh, getting a hands-on as well before we go further. So but still I will try to show you almost all important transformations. So the first one is we will talk about union. So as it is as common as with any other programming languages as well. So union is nothing but uh, it's a combination of maybe one or two data sets. Okay. So the first command would be the load command, right? Load pick off a dot text so I am having a sample a dot text file stored at somewhere on my local file system and I am loading it using pick storage of comma in the sense each tuple in my file would be separated by a comma and the schema of my pick a dot text is a1 int a2 int a3 int so it is having three columns and each of integer data type so we had seen our primitive data types, right? So in that we are representing this text file with integer. And I'm loading another file called as so text will be comma separated. Yes. When whenever you are uh, okay, you are fine, right? So, for example, if I remove this comma and I keep a semicolon, then my file would be, whenever I retrieve some data or whenever I throw some output through this file, it would be with semicolon separated. So, that's what the usage of big storage. So, again, in the same way, I am trying to load one more file into B. So, uh, any one of you remember that what is A called and what is B called?
yesterday we had uh, given some name to those values Come on guys, give a shot. Just try to recollect it. Okay, fine. No issues, no worries. It is called as alias. So A is a alias and B is a alias. So these aliases will be used in our next steps for filtering some more data or if at all you want to manipulate something on it you would be using these aliases instead of using the whole command so the output of each command will be stored into their particular alias and it is mandatory to give this alias also the next one is dump a so dump a will give you the output of your text file so maybe in your a file you might be having 0 1 and 2 represented in this form a dot text file might be having 0 1 to. In general, the text files you would be saving it with tab separated because it was the default one. Okay. And 1, 3, 4. Whenever you are dumping it, you are representing it in the form of a, a bag, each value separated by a comma because we are giving the pick storage as comma. And maybe b dot text might be having few other values. 0, 5, 2, and 1, 7, 8. And that's why whenever you dump this, you will be seeing a 0, 5, 2, 0, 5, 2, and 1, 7, 8. Now, if I give this command union a, b, and trying to store it in alias called as c, it would be giving the output as 0, 1, 2, 0, 5, 2, 1, 3, 4 and 1, 7, 8. So it is nothing but clubbing your two files A and B. So let me show you a few examples. So, in my whole PIG execution, I have three files that were located in my local file system called as PIG1, PIG2 and PIG3. So, first of all, I will try to load all these three files into my HDFS and then I will load into my PIG systems and after that I will try to give some transformations on these three files. Okay? All good? fine guys just hold on for a second uh, my laptop is draining out one second Okay, let's start. So the first step is 
enter Hadoop and start all processes. So we already did it, right? So we entered into Hadoop and we had started all our services. So the first thing is copy all your files from your local file system to your HDFS. So if you remember, the copy command is copy from local or maybe you can even use put also, right? So but still I am trying to use it, copy from local. And one thing that you have to note here is you can execute these statements out of PIC and as well as inside the PIC. If at all you are executing this statement out of PIC, you have to start your commands with Hadoop FS. But if you are trying to execute the same command inside PIC, in the sense once you enter into PIC mode, you have to execute starting it from FS. So that is the only difference. So whatever the command might be, it might be a remove command, copy from local or copy to local, whatever it might be. In PIC, it should start from FS, whereas in regular our Hadoop cluster, it has to start with Hadoop FS. So let us run this program. So, if you see the property here, PIG1 is stored in home Gita programs. So, that's the reason I'm giving the same command here, okay? Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. And the last one is three. So I'm copying three files from my local file system into HDFS. So let us see whether we had copied properly or not. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.